Today we're finally going to answer the question of how do we combine Firebase with Angular Universal to build a search engine optimized JavaScript app. Recent changes to Angular Fire 2 now make it possible to perform server side rendering with Universal. What this means is that our app's content can be understood by search engines and used by social media link bots. And we might even get some good page load performance gains out of it. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe, and I highly recommend that you follow along with the source code on angularfirebase.com. First, let's talk about what server-side rendering is. Normally, we just let the browser parse all of the JavaScript and render it out to HTML. But this becomes a problem if your app has routes that need to be indexed in a search engine or shared on social media. Most bots that visit your site only understand HTML and don't make any effort to parse the JavaScript that's there. What we can do is make our Angular app behave more like a traditional web application that responds with HTML from a server. On the first page visit, it will render the app to HTML and then send it over to the browser, which will then take over and transition it to work just like a regular Angular app. In this demo, I'll show you how to go from zero to deployed Angular Universal app, and we'll generate all of the content with this collection of animals that I have stored in the Firestore database. I should warn you that we have a lot of code to get through, but most of it's configuration related stuff that you can just copy and paste into your project. But I documented everything step by step in the main article, so you can follow along with that if you get lost. Step one is to generate a new Angular app and make sure that it has a routing module. Then install the latest version of Angular Fire 2 and Firebase. And then send a thank you card to James from Firebase because he made some pretty epic changes to this library to make universal support possible. After that's done, install a platform server from Angular. And if you're doing lazy loading, you'll also need this ng universal module map ng factory loader and TS loader as well. When it comes to social media bots, they're going to be looking for meta tags in the head of the document. You can find the specific requirements on the Facebook and Twitter developer docs, but what I want to show you first is how to efficiently set these meta tags within Angular service. Let's call this our SEO service, and we'll add it to the app module. Angular's browser platform has a couple helpers to set meta tags as well as the document title. So we'll import those and then inject them in the constructor. Then I'm going to define a method that will take an object as its argument. Different social media sites have different requirements for meta tags, which are often very similar. So to keep our code dry, we're going to set some defaults and then just override these defaults with whatever we pass in this tags object, which will ultimately be data that we pull from Firestore. First, we can use the title service to set the document title. And then we'll set our meta tags. As far as I know, we have to call update tag on each one of these because there's no way in Angular to update them all in bulk. Now that that's done, we need a component that gets loaded by the router and use it to set these meta tags. Let's go ahead and call this our animal detail component. Then we'll use this component in our router and we'll make sure to set up a route param for the name, which should match the document ID that we have saved in Firebase for a given animal. The next step is to go into the component, and we'll need a variety of things here, including our SEO service, as well as the Firestore database. Then we'll use activated route to get the current animal name from the URL that that user navigated to. Again, that is the document ID in Firestore, and we can get it by calling route snapshot param map, followed by get name. If we look at this data in Firestore quickly, you'll see we have a variety of documents with an ID of bird, cat, elephant, etc. Then each of these documents has a bio, as well as an image URL and a name. What we need to do is read this document, and then once we have the document data, use it to set the meta tags on the DOM. Angular Fire 2 gives us the data as an observable, so we can pipe in the tap operator. Then once we have the data, we can use our SEO service to generate the tags. But this does bring up one problem, because we're going to read this document on the server and then transition back to the browser, it will read the document twice, and the user will see a brief flash in between those requests. This is slowed down significantly, but notice how we get some initial data from the server, it goes blank, then it comes back online after we've transitioned into the browser. Fortunately, Universal gives us some tools to transition state from the server side to the client side. It just allows you to set a key value pair on the server and then read it on the browser. So we'll import transfer state as well as make state key, then we'll set up a constant here with make state key and give it the name of animal. When we get data on the server, we'll set it as this animal key and then read it when we get back to the browser. And transfer state is a service, so we'll add that to our constructor. 
And then I'm going to define this as its own isolated method so you can reuse it if you have use for this in your own app. So what we're going to do in this method is first check if a document already exists. This should always return false on the server. It takes the key we define as the first argument and then a default value as the second argument. And just like we did before, we'll get our Firestore document as an observable and pipe in the tap operator. But this time we will set the animal key with the document data. And we can also set our meta tag values here like we did before. So the only question that remains is how do we use this existing document for our observable value once we transition to the browser? And the answer is super easy. We have an RxJS operator called start with, and we can just pass it that existing object. So instead of null, you still have your existing document from the server. But it is worth noting that this will execute two document reads in Firestore, so that may or may not be an issue for you. Keep in mind that you only server-side render on a full page load, so it's unlikely that that would be an issue in most cases. The last thing we need to do is go into the animal detail component and subscribe to the animal observable, which we can do with the async pipe. That takes care of our front-end Angular app portion. Now we have a whole bunch of configuration stuff to do with Angular Universal. Most of this stuff is copy and paste configuration for right now, but hopefully some of this comes to the Angular CLI in the future. First, we'll go into the existing app module and add with server transition to the browser module import and set any random app ID that you want. And then make sure to import the transfer state module if you're doing a state transfer as well. Then the next thing you'll need to do is create an app server module. And it should also live inside the app directory. Basically, all this is doing is taking your app module and then importing it into another module that is set up to be rendered on the server. Then if you're transferring state, you'll need the server transfer state module and also the module map loader if you're doing lazy loading in your app. You wouldn't want lazy loading on the server, so that module takes care of that aspect for you. That should take care of everything in the app directory. Now we're going to move up to the source directory and add a new file called main.server.ts. All it has to do is import the app server module that we just created. This is more of a formality because main is our main entry point into the app. We also need to create a tsconfig for our main server ts file. So create tsconfig.server.json. One of the main differences between the browser build and the server build is that our server build needs to be in common.js so it can work on node.js. The next thing we need to do is configure our app with the Angular CLI so the CLI knows how to bundle it and where to transpile all the code. The next thing we'll do is build our actual server code, which uses Express.js, which is one of the most popular HTTP frameworks for Node.js. Create the server TS file, and then copy and paste all of this Express.js code into that file. This code was taken from the official Angular Universal demo, and only a few little modifications were made here and there to make it work with Firebase. For example, Firebase uses a few things that aren't available in Node.js, such as WebSockets. But a way to get around this is to set them on the global object, which is the equivalent to the window object in a browser. There's a handful of things you might need in your project to make the server environment compatible with Firebase. I was able to install them with this command, which you can find in the main article. If you look at the Express.js app, you'll notice that it's not the prettiest code ever. The most important thing to understand here is that this Express app is capturing all of the routes in our Angular application and then rendering them to HTML based on wherever the user navigates. So that means they can navigate to a deep link and they'll get the rendered HTML for that page. The one thing about Express is that it's completely separate from our Angular application. The Angular CLI has no way to compile this down to a production build for us, and we can roll out our own Webpack config to do that. Create another file called webpack.server.config.js. And we're going to add some more not so pretty code to it. But essentially, what we're doing is what the Angular CLI does under the hood. In this case, it's taking our TypeScript file and compiling it down to JavaScript that can run on Node. You should be able to copy and paste this and just forget about it as long as you're placing all of your files in the same place that we did in this lesson. We're getting really close to the end here. The next thing we need to do is go up into the root of the project and in the angular cli.json file add a configuration for our server app. 
You'll notice that the apps option is an array. That's because we can add multiple apps to the Angular CLI configuration, which is exactly what we need to do here. Again, we're doing another copy and paste style thing where we take the existing app and then we make a few modifications to it to point to the resources for our server app. We will point the main entry point to the main.server.ts file. We can also remove polyfills because they're not needed on the server and you'll want to set service worker to false if using a worker. At this point, we need to build three different apps, our Express.js server, our Angular browser app and Angular server app. We can do this in the package JSON in the scripts object. Basically, we're just combining our ng build commands with our webpack config to run everything all at once. We can run these two commands together by doing npm run build colon ssr and serve colon ssr. When the build finishes, it should serve your express app on localhost 4000, and you should see all three apps in the dist folder. But it really shouldn't feel any different than a normal Angular app. It just has this secret power to be understood by link bots and search engines. If you copy a link from your app and paste it into the Twitter card validator, you should see a valid card even though this data is pulled from the Firestore database asynchronously. And you'll also want to check to see if you've achieved any performance gains from SSR. For this demo, I ran a Lighthouse audit and achieved a score of 94, which is really good for an Angular app pulling data from Firebase. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to talk about more advanced SSR scenarios, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to all kinds of exclusive content designed to help you ship apps on the Angular Firebase stack. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.